Hello, my name is Alicia from My Crafty Pursuits. Today we are going to be making paint palettes and paint brushes. And they have a little magnet that holds them together. We'll start off by making our paint palette that has the optional handle. And then we will make our paint brushes. And we'll go over on how to place the magnets inside so they stick together. For this pattern, we're gonna need a few supplies. First, our yarn. We'll need about 36 yards of our white. We'll need six colors that we'll need approximately two yards each of. I have red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and purple that I will use for my paint. We'll also need a brown, about nine yards for the handle of the paintbrush, about three yards of the gray. We'll also need our scissors, our tapestry needle, we'll need our G hook. We'll need four stitch markers. We'll need a little bit of fluff. We'll also need two round magnets and a wire brush for brushing out the bristles. So this one here is a cat brush, or they also have these cleaning brushes with the wire bristles that also work well for brushing out the yarn. We're gonna start our paint palette with our G hook and our white yarn. And we're gonna start with a single crochet foundation row. If you're not sure how to do a foundation row, I will link another video in there that describes that. Then we are going to chain one and turn. And for rows two and three, we're going to single crochet five. Chain one, turn. Row three, single crochet five. Row four, we're gonna single crochet, turn, single crochet two in the white, and then we're gonna do our color change. So we're gonna start with our first color. I'm starting with red. And our last stitch is gonna be pulled with our color change. And that's gonna give us a more even look. If you need more help with the color change, I'll link another video with the color changes in it as well. Our even rows are gonna be our right side, front side up, and our odd rows are gonna be our wrong side, so the back side. So this is our front side, and we're gonna do our puff stitches. We'll also link the puff stitch tutorial as well. And again, to color change our last stitch, last loop of our last stitch will be pulled with our color that we're going into. And then we'll single crochet two more. Chain one and turn. We're gonna single crochet one with our white. We're going to color change To our red and we're gonna puff stitch once again. And we're gonna double crochet and then another puff stitch. Our last loop of our last stitch we'll use the color we're changing to. And we're gonna single crochet one more. Chain one and turn. And then you just wanna make sure that all your puffs are puffed out to the upside or the right side of your work. Row six, we're going to do our chain one and then our two single crochets. Color change to our red.
in our puff stitch. Color change back to our white for our last two single crochets of row six. Chain one and turn. And for row seven and eight, we're gonna do five single crochets across. This is our first paint splotch on our watercolor paint palette. So we're gonna tie off our red. And we'll just tie it here to secure it so our red does not fall out. And for the rest of our paint colors, we're gonna be doing the same thing that we did with our red. So again, to show you with the orange, we'll start out with our two single crochets in our white, not pulling that last loop of the second single crochet so we can do our color change, keeping all our strings on the wrong side, underside of the palette. And our first puff stitch of our color. And then pulling the last stitch of our puff stitch with our white that we're changing to for the last two single crochets of round nine. Chain one and turn. One single crochet. And then into our color change our colored puff stitch into our half double crochet, another colored puff stitch, and then on that last loop of the last stitch, changing back to our white for our last single crochet. Row 11, we're gonna chain one, turn, Two single crochets, color change to our paint color, puff stitch, change back to our paint palette color, our white, for our last two single crochets of row 11. Chain one, turn, and five single crochets for both rows 12 and 13. So now we have our paint splotch for our red, our paint splotch for our orange, and we're gonna cut and tie off our orange color now that we're done with it. We're gonna continue the rest of our colors the same way that we did our red and our orange. And we'll do our yellow, green, blue, purple. We're going to be moving from rows to rounds. So we finished our row 34. We're going to chain one and turn, and this is going to become a round. So we're going to single crochet four, and then in this corner stitch, we're going to do an increase of three. So three single crochets 
in that stitch and we're going to place a stitch marker in the middle of the three increase. And this is our corner stitch, so we want to have them marked because we are going to come back to these stitches. Then we're going to single crochet 34 across the top. Then when we make it back to the other side, we're going to do our increase of three in the corner. and marking that middle single crochet as our corner stitch. Gonna single crochet three. Then in the other corner, we're going to do another increase of three, marking our corner stitch. Then we're gonna do 34 across the top. When we make it back, we're going to do two single crochets in the same stitch as our starting single crochet. The second single crochet of our increase is going to be that middle single crochet, which is our corner stitch. And then we're going to slip stitch back into the first stitch, pulling our slip stitch tight so it's more of a knot than it is a stitch. And then we're going to chain one for round 36. We're going to chain one. We are not going to turn and we're going to be working front loops only. So front loops, back loops. So we're only going through that front loop. And this is going to help create that box shape. I'm going to single crochet five. And that brings us to our corner stitch marker stitch. And for this round, we're going to skip this stitch. So skip a stitch and then we're going to single crochet front loops only 36 stitches across. After our single crochet of 36, that brings us back to our corner stitch that is marked. We're going to skip that stitch, single crochet five, at the corner with the stitch marker, skipping that stitch, front loops only, single crochet 36. bringing us back to that corner stitch. Skip that corner stitch and we're going to slip stitch to join in that first single crochet that we made of round 36. And we're going to chain one and we are going to turn for this one for round 37. Our first stitch is going to be in our stitch mark stitch so we can take that out and we're going to double crochet into what is now the back loop, but would have been our front loop of that stitch. So double crochet into our round 35, and then we're going to continue working into our round 36. So we're going to single crochet 36 across. And our 36th stitch brings us back to our stitch mark stitch. So we can take that stitch marker out for that corner stitch and we're going to back loop only double crochet since our stitches are facing this way, front loop, back loop. And we're going to double crochet into round 35 for that corner stitch. And then we're going to continue singly, single crocheting back into round 36 for five stitches, bringing us to our next corner stitch, taking that stitch marker out, double crocheting into the back loop only for each of our corners. 
and then continuing single crochet across. Once we're back, we can take our stitch marker out, double crochet back loop only of our corner stitch. And single crochet in our last five stitches. We're gonna slip stitch into the first double crochet we made. And chain one. And we're gonna be turning into this stitch here. So we're skipping our first double crochet and then into the single crochet, and we're gonna do back loops only to work the bottom. And we're going back to rows now. So we'll single crochet 36 across. Once we make it to the end of our row 39, we're gonna chain one and turn, and we're gonna work a back across that same row. We're gonna single crochet 36 for rows 40 through 43. When we reach the end of our row 43, we're gonna take and we're gonna cut a long tail and we're gonna leave it long enough so we can sew all our borders shut. And this will leave us with the square to our palette. So the little corners help to keep that square shape. So we have our top and then this is going to be the bottom. Before we sew this shut, we're going to create our pocket for our magnet. And to do that, we're just going to do a little three by three square. So three single crochets across three times. Then we're gonna leave a generous tail so we can sew our square on. So take our tapestry needle. And I sewed mine kinda in the middle, so between the yellow and the green on the inside. And you can start off with doing a couple of the corners of your square so your magnet has a pocket to sit in. We want to keep it so the magnet sits within our side row. So take one part of our magnet and we place the magnet inside our square so it's sandwiched between the square and the side. And then we're just going to finish sewing on our square so our magnet is secure on the inside edge of our palette. We're just going to tie to secure it on. And then we'll come back to our tail here and we'll start to sew up the ends of our palette. So our corner piece is going to go in our corner. And I'm just going to whip stitch through the inside loops. So if this is my front loop and this is my back loop, I'm going to whip stitch through the front loops. And then I'm just going to go back across so I can get back to my outer edge again. Of the edge closest to me through the front loops of the edge furthest away. I'm just going to whip stitch them together. Once we get about halfway, we're gonna start stuffing. We'll take a little bit of our polyfill, separate it out so it's not particularly clumpy. And then we're just gonna stuff it to the edge. So you don't wanna wait till you're all the way to the other end because it'll make it harder to stuff evenly all the way across. So you can stuff it 
a little bit or a lot of it, depending on how fluffy or firm you want your palette to be. Before you sew up the last five, make sure that you have all the stuffing you would like in your palette to be there. Close up the end, and if you want your stitches to be extra secure, you can make another pass going backwards, or you can cut, tie, secure, weave in all your ends here. For the optional part, we have a hand strap that we can place on the back of our palette so we can hang on to it. For that, we're going to start with an extra long tail so we can sew our hand piece onto the back of our palette. And we're going to start with doing a foundation row of single crochets, and we're just going to do three of them. And then we're going to chain one and turn, and we're going to do three single crochets for rounds two through twenty. row 20 and we're going to transition into a round so we're going to chain one we're not going to turn we're going to be working down the sidebars of our single crochets for 20 stitches so single crochet all the way down when we make it back to our starting row we're going to do three single crochets in our corner so an increase of three. And we're gonna leave this tail loose so we're still able to use it in a minute. One single crochet, single crochet, three in the corner. And then single crochet, 20 down the other side. And a single crochet, three in our corner. One single crochet, single crochet, three in our corner. And then we're gonna slip stitch into that first single crochet of the round. And we're gonna secure and we're gonna leave a tail so we can tie this end on as well. So I'll take our tapestry needle and you can place your strap wherever you would like. I'm gonna place mine so it's at the edges of these two colors. And again, just gonna whip stitch. And we will tie this one to secure it on. And just weave in our ends. And then we'll do the same thing on our other side. Secure this end by knotting it, and then weave in our end. And that will give us our strap. For this next part, we're going to be making the brush, and there are full instructions in the blog post on how to do that if you want to follow row by row. And if you would like the blog post is linked below for you to find all the instructions. So we're going to start with our magic ring. We're going to do four single crochets and we're going to work all the way up the handle until we do our gray transition. So our round two is going to be a single crochet increase single crochet, increase for six. Rows three through six are gonna be six single crochets as well. Round seven, we're gonna increase again. So a single crochet, increase three times around. So we will have nine single crochets for the end of round seven. 
And for rounds eight through 10, we're gonna be doing nine single crochets around. For 11, we're gonna be increasing again. So we're gonna do two single crochets followed by an increase three times. So we're going to have 12 single crochets for round 11. And then for rounds 12 through 14, we are also going to have 12 single crochets. At the end of our round 12, we're going to pause to make our pocket for our other magnet. So again, for our magnet, we're gonna do our three by three square. We're gonna leave a generous tail to sew our square into our handle. So I can flip our handle partially inside out to make it a little bit easier to sew. And same that we did with the inside of the palette. We're just going to sew a couple of the edges around so we have something to pocket our magnet into while we sew the rest of our corners down. So when we sew our magnet, we want to make sure that it's going to stick and not repel itself. Not that you can see the repelling, but it doesn't go together this way. So you want to make sure that the magnets are on the side that attract each other. Stick your magnet into your handle. And if you want to make sure that it's just the right way, then you can test it out before you sew it closed. And at this point, if you wanted to, you can start adding a little bit of stuffing to get it all the way down in the bottom of your handle. And then we're going to move on to our round 15. So we're going to be decreasing again. So we'll do our two single crochets and then our decrease stitch, two single crochets and a decrease stitch. And then for round 16 through 19, we're also going to do nine single crochets around. Round 20, we're also going to single crochet nine around. And when we make it back to our beginning stitch, we're going to slip stitch to join and we're going to pull that tight. And then we're going to color change to our gray. So we'll put our color gray on. And we'll just tie off our brown. And we can hide both our tails inside. And do a little bit more fluff in the handle. And for our round 21, starting with our gray. We're going to do back loops only, and we're going to do nine around. Round 22, we're also going to do nine around. Round 23, we're going to decrease. So single crochet two together and then we're going to single crochet three single crochet two together 
and then single crochet three. So we'll have seven single crochets for round 23, and we're also gonna single crochet around for seven for round 24. At the end of our round 24, we're going to slip stitch to join. And then our round 25, we're going to be working back loops only again. And we're going to single crochet two together, single crochet two, two together. And then we are going to slip stitch to join. And we're going to leave ourselves a tail so we can close off the hole completely. And working these back loops will create a top to our brush. So I'm just going to slip stitch, oops, slip stitch back into our first stitch. And to close off our hole, we can weave through the front loops of our last round and then pull them tight. And we're gonna go through the middle and we'll just secure it down this way. Part. And before you sew your hole closed, make sure that you have your brush stuffed to your desired firmness. I can hide the tail inside. And then we're going to move on to the bristles. So for the bristles of our brush, we're going to take some pieces of yarn. I like to wrap mine around a couple times and then cut. And then we're going to use a latch hook method. So we're just going to go through the sidebars of the stitches on the top and go through the stitch. And then we're going to pull our black yarn through. Other side loop, we're going to wrap around again and pull it through. And we'll just pull it tight. And we're going to do that a few times across. Once you have your desired number of bristles on your brush, we can go through, make them all individual strands, and give it its first haircut. And there are a few different options. So you can take your tapestry needle and unwind and just leave them as an unwind part for thicker bristles. Each yarn will unwind a little bit differently. Or if you want kind of that softer bristle look, you can take your wire brush and you can brush out all your yarn, which will give it a hair-like texture. And then you can decide if you want a fan brush or if you want more of a tapered pointed brush. So you could either cut it into a fan shape here or you can cut it into a tapered shape going that way. So I'm going to cut mine into a fan shape here. And then after you get your brush the way you want it to look, you 
And then we have our paint palette and brush. Thank you for joining me today in making our paint palettes and our paint brushes. I hope you enjoy them.